All right, everyone, we are going to get a win here, and it's going to all start off with this fabulous keep. We just like it all to come together one time. All right, nice little... Nice little green belt rampage or something. No. All right. Going to go here. Um, I'm going to sacrifice it next turn in case we draw our uh, one mana, one, two death touch. Uh, we no longer need it to fix for mana as we have both double green and double red. So uh, all we need to do is draw us a card here. So that is why Unbridled Growth is a pretty decent magic card. Bam. Just like we drew it up. Um, no advantage to hiding or concealing information here. Um, there's just no advantage. I mean, there's no way he's going to play differently knowing that we have one forest and one mountain. Um, it is kind of sick that he gets to play four mana worth of things on turn three, though. Like, that is something I wish that I got to do, but I don't. Instead, I get to play Aether Storm Leopard into Sky Ship Stalker. Um, implement of Examination. Which one is that? That's the blue implement. That's actually a pretty dang good magic card. All right, I'm going to attack for two, obviously, get in an Aether Stream Leopard. I mean, we're really just going to try to attack him to death here before he can get all of his nonsense set up over here. Again, he's not attacking into an Aether Stream Leopard. If he does, like, if his next turn is play the blue implement, crack the green implement, put a counter on Trophy Mage, attack for three, that's totally fine. We're going to hit back for six, play a Door Buster, and then the game's going to be wide open from there. Wow, Lifecraft Calvary, he didn't even try to do anything different all right i mean i'm obviously just attacking here i'm pretty clearly just attacking like straight into his life calf calvary don't even care can't even care to be honest if this was a mountain this might change my play i might be more tempted to hold back a stalker but knowing one card in his hand um the blue implement uh and knowing that if he trades his calvary here it's going to be hard for him to kill our stalker because he won't have things like prey upon and hunt the week open to him okay so we didn't trade it so now that kind of makes me want to play a door buster So first of all, Door Buster is great because it gives more energy to Leopard. Um, now the reason it's bad is because next turn I could have used uh, one energy for the Sky or one red mana for the Skyship Stalker and uh, tap my three Force and a Mountain for the Malthus Door Buster before combat. But uh, kind of afraid of prey upons and things of that nature. So we again we know one of the three cards in his hand right now. We know that the Implement of Ferocity can draw him a card at any point. Uh, we also know that. We, our chances of seeing a third red mana to give our Skyship Stalker haste is uh, pretty low. Uh, we're just happy to take f f six here. I mean, we're, we're killing this race, especially if we draw a land for Skyship Stalker or if we draw like a three drop. If we draw a three drop, we get to play two cards next turn, and that's insane. Um, yeah, Elegant Edge Crafters. I imagine he's going to make three one one or two one ones. Yep, and then he's going to block the door buster like so. Uh, we get a Druid of the Cowl. Huh, what do we do here? How do we kill him most effectively? It's going to be five, so he's at seven. Yes. So trying to do this the smart way where I make the elegant edge crafters block the door buster if he wants it to. Right, I'm fine with him trading his six drop for my three drop. I'm also fine with him trading his six drop for my one drop. I'm fine with both of those. Um, I just don't want its ability. His ability is pretty good. I'm basically making it so that next turn the only thing he can attack with is the trophy mage unless he implements to put it on the trophy mage and attacks that way. But we're pretty clearly going to try to win the race here. So uh, making this just hard blocks for him. All right, let's go Sky Ship, Sky Ship Stalker. Um, 
I mean, I wonder if he has anything. Uh, we know one of the cards in his hand again. We don't know all the cards in his hand. He also has a bunch of draws he can make here. If he has, like, a Prey Upon, um, he's pretty good, right? He just gets to Lifecraft Calvary, or he gets to choose his target for Prey Upon and Hunt the Week. Um, and Nature's Way. So if he's in any of those blue tricks, uh, if he has Ice Over, that doesn't really help him. Uh, he's still dead to a Mountain if he has Ice Over. A Mountain or Destructive, uh, not Destructive Revelry, Destructive Tampering. He's, he's dead all those ways. I think this is a Prey Upon here. Nope. All right, all right. I would imagine he's putting this on the Trophy Mage. Nope. It's going right on the Calvary. That's fine. He wants the Calvary to be able to eat the Doorbuster here. Ridge Scale Tusker. All right. I mean, so basically what he's saying is, Sam, you have one turn to draw the Nizzles, and then I'm going to kill you. Or am I just dead? Wow, he just he just had me. No, he doesn't have me exactly. What am I talking about? I just block here. Right, one, two, five. Well, yeah, I go to one. I go to one. All right, got some draws that uh, win the game here. That is for certain. What? Huh? Does he know he could have just blocked my Malthus Doorbuster? I mean, it turns out I would have won, but he didn't know I would have won. Why did he concede? Did he just snap concede because he was mad? Interesting. All right, well, I definitely shouldn't have won that game. Or I guess I would have ended up winning that game, but I shouldn't have won it by my opponent conceding. Uh, that being said, Destructive Tampering is going to be at its best here. Pacification Array is also going to be fantastic. Wish we had a Prey Upon, but we don't. That's okay. Uh, up one game to zero in what's basically the mirror, except it looks like our opponent has fantastic cards, and we have mediocre, mediocre cards. I mean, Rich Gale Tusker is really a beast. Our opponent has Mulliganed. Uh, we are going to follow suit, and we're going to make this a keep. I don't know why it keeps doing this, even though I've already decided to keep. We're going to bottom. And uh, try to draw like a ramp, a rampager or something. Druid of the Cowl is perfectly acceptable as well. Hmm. The question is, is do we Druid of the Cowl first or Thriving Drops first? If we draw a four drop, it's really easy to figure that out. I think we grubs to start getting in for damage. Like we kind of want to attack next turn. Our opponent is also on six cards, right? So we're both on six cards, plus I'm on the draw uh, with a very good, with two very good five drops. Uh, our opponent's deck is maybe just the most absurd deck I've ever seen. But actually, our last opponent's deck was even more absurd than this, so let's take that into account. Pacification Array is going to do a lot, a lot of heavy lifting here. Um, but that being said, I think we just have to take four this turn and slam Repairing Tiger. That being said, I mean, if we draw a three drop, then we're obviously going to play a three drop. But um, if we don't draw a three drop, we're just going to slam a Tiger. Foil Bristling Hydra, that's intense. Intense. What do we see here? All right, that's going to be good, I assume. Although what he doesn't know is that if he pumps this this turn, that's actually not that good for him. But I could, like, force him to, interestingly. I could force him to. No, that's not good. That's so bad for me if I force him to use his energy here. So I said that whole thing, but then I, I mean, who doesn't want to just monstrous onslaught his face here? It also makes it so we can't block. This card is so good. He can't block me, homie. You can't block me. 
or attack me because I can block you. Something like that. Sorry. Uh, again, I'm I'm way out of sorts here. What? Well, yeah. Um, I gotta tell you a secret about. I I gotta tell you something about that. I'm gonna play. I'm I'm gonna play this card called Mantra's Onslaught next turn, and I'm gonna kill your Bristling Hydra, and then I'm gonna attack for six. Okay, I have to tell you a secret. None of that was in the plans. Literally none of that. Oh, so gross. So gross. Yeah, just gotta use this dumb pacification right next turn. Another Rich Gale Tusker. Okay. No. He's just gonna draw three cards. Dumb! Alright. We're at 10 life. What did we do to deserve this? The issue is I really don't know what we did to deserve this. The worst card would be Sage of Shilius Clan, but at least that's not happening right quick. Let's not forget that we do still have a Mantra's Onslaught, although our Mantra's Onslaught's not fantastic here. It was going to be really, really, really good until he did all the things that he did, and now it's not going to be as good anymore. Hmm. That's strong. Okay, so what can we do here? We can attack with a Riparian Tiger, kill his Bristling Hydra, And then double block. I mean, I guess we can do that, but that's like so bad. The issue is that I don't even know what other other options we have here. Like, I think we literally need to do this. And then we just need to do it all to this, okay. And then if you have a removal spell or anything, we're dead. Um... But what we're going to try to do is we're going to try to survive somehow, except I'm not really sure how we're going to survive. I mean, theoretically, a pacification array can keep us alive for a while if our opponent just bricks, right? But our opponent's not just going to brick. They're going to draw things like Implement of Ferocity, which just make it harder for us to win. All right. Um, I'm surprised he didn't pop that off before combat, but I guess it doesn't really matter, right? He knows what we're doing. He knows that our goal is to... Uh, block one on each here. Witch Scale Tusker is an absurd Magic the Gathering card. Oh, okay. Jeez. GG. Alright. Let's try this one more time. For all the marbles, my friends. Friends, Romans, countrymen. For all the marbles. I think Fairgrounds, Terror of the Fairgrounds is going to be better than Filgrid Crawler just because it can block more effectively. Let's go. Let's go. We can do it. I mean, I th okay, look. We obviously beat him game one. Um, although I don't think we beat him fairly game one. Like, we ended up having the victory on the top of our deck, but, like, whatever. So let's say, let's say that's a fair one. Let's say we beat him game one. Um, we can definitely beat him in game number two or in game number three. It's going to be really, really hard. But... That being said, we, I mean, his deck seems very, very strong, right? He has Bristling Hydras, and he has, I mean, he has all types of nonsense in his deck. So, uh, his deck seems very strong. That being said, we do have the ability to go, like, Green Belt Rampager into, you know, 
renegade freighter into Malphus or Buster and then you're dead. Or, you know, we, we have abilities like that. Keep. This hand is also fine. I mean, this hand isn't the best. We need to draw a land in our first two draw steps, but um, we can draw a land or I would also accept a renegade freightier. I'd accept either of those two things. Okay, I thought he was going to lead off with a pacification array as well. I thought that was about to be hilarious. Land is the real deal, although I would prefer a red land. So um, we need one more land in our hand to be able to cast a turn four on the player Riparian Tiger, which is going to be much stronger than most of the things our opponent can do here. So we're just going to play a Renegade Freighter. Um, there was a play there, by the way, where we, on his upkeep, tapped down his Druid of the Cowl to make sure that he couldn't also accelerate. Um, but obviously, playing Renegade Freighter is just so much more important, right? If we had bricked and drawn a land, that would have been the play. Um, but because we didn't brick and we didn't draw a land, uh, Renegade Freighter is just the way to go here. Uh, hoping to draw a creature or a land. Four, drop, or land. Land it is. Get that out of there. Get that roll in. Going to be able to Monstrous Onslaught for six next turn if we really want to blow him out. This can block, right? Yeah. So he can make it a... A 4-1, right. Alright, so I hope he plays something with like... I hope he plays like a Leopard or something next turn, right? A Leopard would be awesome. If he just plays a Leopard and passes... No, he wouldn't do that because he would just have that up. Um, Ridge Scale Tusker would be okay for us. That would be the worst. I'm trying to think what he could... Okay, so we... Basically traded our freighter for his shipwreck, which isn't the best thing in the world, especially when he has an implement that's going to draw him a card, but we do have the vast edge on board, um, and if we draw a red land, I mean, we just have more of an edge, right? Um, we still have a lot of things in our deck to get there. Lifecraft Calvary. Okay, awesome. Land of some sort? Red? Red. No green. No green. No green. Um, okay. Okay, he's not blocking here, obviously. Um, I don't think it's time to use Mantra's Onslaught, although it could be. I think what it's time to do is use pacif Pacification Array very, very wisely. That's what I'm going to say it's time for. Um... Malphus Doorbuster is going to be useful, don't get me wrong, right? As soon as we draw a red land, we have six lands, so we can door plus Doorbuster plus Pacification Array. Um, and he is at 10, so it's not like we're that far away from killing him. Plus, we do have some big stuff in our deck. I would assume that our opponent's going to be smart here and make some 1-1s. One one Redland, ornamental coverage. All right. Let's go. Our opponent is at five. We have a pacification array. The question is, can he kill our thing? Um, and I don't think he can because we have ornamental cards, right? Like, a malfunction obviously does it, um, but a lot of other stuff doesn't here. Just putting it on the Lifecraft Calvary. I would love a Prey Upon, by the way. A Prey Upon would be sweet, a Hunt the Week, not as sweet. A Ridge Scale Tusker sucks. Lifecraft Calvary, okay. So 
So let's see what he does here. He's going to have to leave two things back for sure. The question is, do we eat this? We probably eat it. I really like to draw a red land. <sighs> that just doesn't get the job done here. Mantra's Onslaught does not go to the face. Um, and it going to a creature here just doesn't mean anything. So we're really going to have to use it effectively again. And we might have to force him, we might be able to force him to lock with his Druid of the Cowl. But um, if he just has another creature, it's not good for us, right? Like if he has a Rich Scale Tusker or something like that, a 5-5, five, five, uh, again, we're in the spot of needing to draw a red land. If we had drawn a red land that turn, I think we assuredly would have won the game. But instead, now we're, I mean, now we're behind again. Now he is at five, and we do have a pacification race, so it's not like we're super far behind because we do have a monstrous onslaught hand, um, but it's not like we're ahead either. Right. So this spot sucks, right? Because he can he can double block us. Yeah, this spot really sucks. Um, now the the thing about this spot is that if we draw a red land, then we're probably okay. So now what do we do? Uh, we can play a door buster here. I like that initial approach. We could then tap down the edge crafters and attack for six. Now what would that do? What would attacking for six do? It would mean that he has to block with a Druid of the Cowl, and then he goes to two. Um, right, but then he has all that stuff on offense. I think I'm just going to pass here. The thing is that I have, I have Monsters Onslaught up this turn as well. So I can do four to him. Now, obviously, if he draws something like a Hunt the Week this turn, it's just so bad for me. Um, but if he, if we can somehow delay something, him drawing something really, really game-changing until the next turn, then I think we're going to have it here. He, right, he's obviously going to attack and make a 1-1. One, one. Um, but that actually kind of makes our job easier a little bit, right? We can kill the Aether Herder and the 1-1. One, one. Wait, so what is going on here? I have to think about this real quick. So if we tap down this, and we attack with these two, and I make it so this can't block, and this is a six, then he blocks this with like this, let's say. Yeah, that's not good. Something like that. Wait, what just happened there? I had four. Oh, I miscounted. Interesting. So now if I make this not block, and I attack, then he blocks this here. I just mess up. So if I use one energy to make this not block, 
He just blocks here. It takes four. And then he hits me for one, two, three, four. Ah, uh, I did this all wrong. So bad of me. I mean, we may get out of this one, but it's because, I mean, it's it's not because I'm not an idiot, you know? I ended up basically monstrous, monstrous onslaughting to just kill one thing, which is, like, never good. He's just going to chump there. Taking four, going to one, and then I might just be dead on the on the swing back. Oh, that was such a punt live on camera. That's so bad of me. Yeah, he's rushing to attacks because he knows he has me dead. Oh, he didn't have me dead. Excellent. Let's go here. Do the whole thing. Um, woo! All right, that was a close one. Thank you everybody so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that like button, that subscribe button, drop a comment down below. Tell me how much I punted. Uh, I really think match two was unwinnable, but I'm glad we got matches one and three. Uh, see you next time. Hope you're loving 8th Revolt Draft as much as I am. See you, you know, all the time. Going to be on here Wednesdays and Thursdays. Really, really appreciate it. Go check out my main channel and my Twitch, and I'll see you next week.